Coming up, West Virginia Governor Jim Justice attacks one man's attempt to help close down all U.S. coal plants. And one Lawrence County man talks about his life, how his life changed after winning big in the lottery and losing it all in just mere months. Plus, as the number of reported measles cases continues to climb, local health officials urge people in the mountains to make sure they're up to date on vaccinations. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 630 on Monday, June the 10th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning into Mountain News this morning. It's going to be a soggy start to your week, but things are looking up the further we go on. Let's bring Brandon in this morning. He can give us a better breakdown. And Brandon, basically, I think the one thing people want to know is, is it going to be as muggy today as we saw this past weekend? Yes, in a word, yes, unfortunately. But the relief is coming. Hang in there just a little bit longer because by tomorrow after this cold front goes by, those dew points should drop and that should mean a more comfortable Tuesday for us. Let's take a look at the cameras this morning. WIMT studio camera again, cloudy skies, the name of the game across most of the region this morning. US 119 up on top of Whitesburg Pine Mountain also pretty quiet this morning. Not a whole lot of rain across parts of the area, but again, we're continuing to track that sail down into parts of southeastern Kentucky and they're actually starting to spread out a little bit. Let me actually zoom back out here just a second and kind of show you what's going on across a lot of the area now. You see all the way from Pulaski County back over into Bell County, Knox County again, all the way down into parts of uh, uh, Knox County and Clay County, Leslie County, Harlan County. It's all around this morning in southeastern Kentucky and southern Kentucky. Temperatures 72 Monticello, 66 in Wise. That's kind of your range this morning, your apcast for today. We are going to see chances for scattered showers and storms around throughout the day. Guard variety thunderstorms, I think severe expected, and temperatures top out right around 78. The rest of the forecast is on the way here in just a few minutes. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you. Well, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg is pledging to put his money where his mouth is when it comes to fighting climate change. Bloomberg announced on Twitter Thursday that he is donating $500 million to close all U.S. coal plants by 2030. He calls this initiative the largest ever coordinated campaign to tackle the climate crisis. The initiative called Beyond Carbon aims to steer the United States back on a path to a completely clean energy economy. The New York Times reports that more than 280 U.S. coal plants have shut down or announced their intention to close since 2010. Meanwhile, West Virginia Governor Jim Justice is firing back at the move by Bloomberg. Justice criticized the initiative, saying, quote, Michael Bloomberg's Beyond Carbon initiative is short-sighted, nonsensical, and, if successful, will have a calamitous impact on West Virginia and American workers. He said that the coal, natural gas, and renewable energy industries all provide life-sustaining jobs for West Virginia, helping their economy become one of the fastest growing in the country, and that he would stand by those workers. Workers. Governor Justice says he plans to hold a news conference this afternoon with leaders of the state's energy industry to denounce Bloomberg's announcement. Well, President Trump raised the prospect of renewing his tariff threat against Mexico if it does not work with the United States on border issues. Democratic candidates criticize the deal is overblown. CBS News correspondent Errol Barnett has the latest from the White House. President Trump warned Sunday that tariffs remain an option if Mexico does not cooperate on immigration. The president tweeted, quote, there is now going to be great cooperation between Mexico and the USA. He went on to write, however, if for some unknown reason there is not, we can always go back to our previous very profitable position of tariffs. Mexico's ambassador to the U.S. told CBS's Face the Nation that key provisions of the deal announced late Friday are about to take effect, including using thousands of its National Guard troops to help stem the flow of migrants into the U.S. This deployment will take place now because until two weeks ago we were still discussing the laws to implement the National Guard. Now Mexico describes this as an acceleration of what it is already doing, but Acting Homeland Security Secretary Kevin McAleenan says all of this is new. This is the first time we've heard anything like this kind of number of law enforcement being deployed in Mexico to address migration. On ABC's This Week, Democratic presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke said the president has overstated his success in the deal with Mexico. These are agreements that Mexico had already made in some cases months ago. They might 
might have accelerated the timetable, um, but, but by and large, the president achieved nothing except to jeopardize the most important trading relationship that the United States of America has. The president's response, quote, we have been trying to get some of these border actions for a long time, but we're not able to get them or get them in full until our signed agreement with Mexico. Errol Barnett, CBS News, the White House. Now, in her interview on CBS's Face the Nation, the Mexican ambassador to the United States did not confirm or deny President Trump's tweet on Saturday, saying there is an agreement for Mexico to immediately buy agricultural goods from the United States. Now, campaigning continued among presidential hopefuls this week as the Democratic Hall of Fame dinner in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, took place on Sunday. The dinner is the largest gathering of Democratic candidates thus far. Senator Kamala Harris said that we got a POTUS who made promises and betrayed American people need to prosecute the case. There's a rap sheet full of evidence to make the case. He promised health care and then he tried to rip health care away from millions of people. What's that called? Health care fraud. He said he was for working people. Then he passed a tax bill benefiting the top 1% and the biggest corporations in this country. That's tax fraud. He believes the president of Russia and a North Korean dictator over the word of the American intelligence community. Securities fraud. And then he claims to be the best president we've seen in a generation. Well, I say let's call Barack Obama because that's identity fraud. Now, Pete Buttigieg, Bernie Sanders, and Cory Booker, along with many others, also attended this weekend's event. Well, several people were injured during the Capitol per Pride Parade in Washington, D.C. Saturday while running away from what they thought were gunshots. Police say those hurt were treated for minor injuries. One man was arrested for possession of a handgun, but officials say there is no evidence that any shots were fired. A woman who was with the man was also detained on a separate charge. The Capitol Pride Alliance, which organized the event, said more than 200 organizations were expected to take part in the parade. So far in 2019, more than 1,000 cases of the measles have been reported. Kentucky is not exempt from this list. Multiple people in the state have tested positive for the disease. WYMT's Connor James sat down with local public health director who says from measles to a wide range of other preventable diseases, it's important to get vaccinated. The Kentucky River District Health Department covers several counties in eastern Kentucky. I think we're, we've gotten a little bit complacent about vaccines here in our area. Public Health Director Scott Lockard works on the forefront of infectious diseases in the area. We have the greatest technology that available to date in, in, in these vaccines that we're taking. It's the work of his office that led to the decline in hepatitis A numbers in the Kentucky River District. But he says hepatitis A is just one of many things they have to keep an eye on. You know, we're seeing right now an outbreak of measles. Uh, a lot of these diseases we have not seen in so long. He says there's been a growing trend of people simply not getting vaccinated due to certain fears. Vaccines are safe. Uh, you know, they, they've debunked a lot of false information out there about our vaccinations. So, you know, we should be getting our vaccines for all the childhood preventable diseases. Overall, Lockard says vaccines make his job easier. And so I'm a big advocate of vaccines as your public health director and strongly encourage everyone to get vaccinated. And makes the general population safer. In Perry County, Connor James, WYMT Mountain News. Now, if you have any questions about vaccination, we vaccinations, we have contact information to the district health department on our website over at WYMT.com. Well, yesterday was the last day of Ram in Perry County. More than 300 volunteers helped people get much needed medical care. Some of these services offered included dental, vision and physical exams. It started Saturday morning at six in the morning, but people got the chance to get in line as early as midnight Saturday. Remote Area Medical, with RAM is what that stands for, offers all services for free. No questions asked. More than 500 people took advantage of these services over the weekend. Well, in June of 2016, a typical gas station stop changed one Lawrence County man's life. Matthew Newsom won $125,000 from a $10 lottery scratch-off card. However, during that time, he was addicted to pain pills. The added cash in his pocket upgraded his addiction to heroin. He spent all of his winnings within two months. Now he is in recovery as a peer support specialist at Addiction Recovery Care. Yeah, probably the worst thing that could happen to somebody that was in active addiction. 
Always worried about getting that next fix. You know, I didn't really think about the future too much. Newsom credits his recovery to the treatment he received at ARC. If you or a loved one are, are currently in addi active addiction, you can visit our website for more information on how to get help. Well, two people in Washington state are in custody after a string of deadly shootings. Five people were killed in three separate shootings Saturday in the White Swan area. The three bodies were found on Medicine Valley Road and another on Evans Road. A fifth person died at the hospital. The FBI is now involved working with Yakima Tribal Police and the Yakima County Sheriff's Office. Investigators have not released information regarding the circumstances of the deaths. Well, 10 people were taken to the hospital after a train derailed in Boston. It happened in a tunnel near Kenmore Station, which is close to Fenway Park. The train is operated by Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority and is part of the city's rapid transit system. Some of the victims had to be carried out in stretchers. None of them sustained injuries that are considered life threatening. Meanwhile, three firefighters and three police officers in California are in the hospital being treated after a hazmat related fire. The incident began as firefighters responded to a house fire Saturday. While battling the fire, firefighters learned there was approximately 200 pounds of lithium ion batteries in the garage. Officials say the batteries emitted fluoride gas after being exposed to the fire and water, and that gas escaped into the atmosphere, endangering anyone nearby. The hospital has not released the condition of those hospitalized by the exposure. Well, at 641, let's send it on over to Brandon for a look at your forecast on this Monday. Brandon. Well, we're literally just watching this shower roll in here to Buffalo Mountain up our transmitter this morning. Been watching it the last couple of minutes, and we're going to continue to see that heavy rain fall up there. It's this shower right here at Southern Perry County. It's moving in. You'll see it right there coming through, and it's some heavier bands of rain. We've been tracking that all morning long, coming across several counties. Temperatures in the upper 60s and low 70s as you head out the door this morning and across the state, still across the area, really uh, basically the same, upper 60s and low 70s. Out the door for forecast for you today. 78 to our forecast high. Could get a little bit warmer if you see some sunshine. Not expecting a whole lot of that though. Scattered showers and storms around with that cold front. Will? All righty, Brandon. Thank you. Well, coming up on Mountain News this morning, we'll have stories that are trending on WYMT.com next. Coming up, NASA is opening the International Space Station to tourists as early as next year. But there's a catch.